please welcome Antonio D'Alfonso. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Connie, Margot. Thank you all for uh, being here, for keeping Guernica alive for another 10 years. I would never have been able to do it. I would have burnt out. No, I was burnt out. So I'm going to talk about Philip Heck. He is... Um, Oh, shit, again, I, I pressed the wrong button. Hold on, I'll, I'll get... I, um, I started my uh, translation career with uh, this book, published by Guernica, in 19... Uh, my God, this is a long time ago, 1982, uh, 81. No, it can't be, it's 85, 85. So that was his first book I did, Philip Heck, The Clarity of Voices, Selected Poems. Philip Heck is uh, really, I mean, for people who don't care about translation, it's of no importance. But those who like to know what's happening abroad, anywhere, you know, translation is a great vehicle. And Philip Heck was um, one of the, if not the first writer I read, and modern writer of Quebec in 1974. I, I bought this little chat book called Nat in 1974, a little bookstore. And, uh, and I fell in love with him because he's uh, quite different from anything that in those days, at least, well, he's considered a, a major writer. He's a, he's a loader man now. And he's considered quite important. And he writes very simply and people just toss us off. And um, I was surprised because uh, English poetry, it tends to be very linear and somehow this, this doesn't bite. But uh, give him a chance. So this, uh, this book is part of a collection by uh, the publisher on writers, writers who write about writing. And that's something I wanted to do with Guernica back in, when I was a publisher of Guernica. And I did André Roy's, André Roy's book on uh, writing. And I was going to do a lot of them. I just I needed an editor in those days. I couldn't find an editor to, who was interested on this the topic. So this this book is really about what writing is. So I'm going to read uh, on page 33. And, and he writes in prose, but he's a poet. He writes in prose, uh, full prose. And he always wrote in prose. That's what's unique about him. So that was a very big discovery back in the 70s for me. I mean poetry writing and prose. I know that Baudelaire and Rimbaud did, but it was much later that we discovered through uh, French writers, prose writing, which was considered poetry. So this is number 36. How does one write? This is a question asked by the person who knows you write or has heard that you write. You answer with my foot. The person doesn't seem to understand. You look at your feet. You slip off your shoe. Pull off your sock. You point to your bare foot. Look, this is how I write. You find it difficult to write. I. You cannot trust I. You ask yourself, who is I? You find it hard to fit in this I that is too narrow and pretentious to conform to your identity. You consider yourself plural. You are many I's that crisscross that move about. This is why you enjoy concealing your various eyes in everything you write. If you use the you or the he along with the I, it is to give depth to your various lives, a certain kind of detachment that is more in tune with life's movement. You are a what, white butterfly, a boy of five, 
a blue chair, a woman of 30, a blackbird, a venerable river, a Tuscan villa. Then you came up with H. A fear, I, an I taking a break from I, a passerby enjoying to be passing through, to be loving. All of a sudden, H started popping up in your texts, surprising you, immediately taking a liking to him. He was not as serious as you. He was a bigger dreamer, speaking whatever came to his mind, as naive as a loved child. H provided you with a second existence. You relished walking in his shoes. You liked watching him laugh without making a sound. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio.